Welcome to Mystery Bible. My name is Ken Primus. I am your host. We have been looking at the two brothers. Uh, we looked last week at the, the pre-meeting and the meeting from the book of Jasher because we know the Bible doesn't deal much. It doesn't include much of that information, but we've been pulling from the book of Jasher to kind of um, give us a, a nice roundabout picture of what's going on from different angles or vantage point. I've been putting it and today I want to um, continue looking at it from a different point of view or a different vantage point. But this time I want to use um, the information that is housed within the legend of the Jews. Again, um, the reason why I do this is because I simply love information and gathering things. And I want to make sure that I stay true to the word of God and that, um, that we don't come away from the principles of the Bible. Uh, but I would like to still offer you some additional information from this other uh, uh, documentation so that you and I can see. And again, we can uh, decide how we want to use it. But the core uh, value of the story is the same as it is in the book of Yasher and in the Bible. And so we are going to take a look at uh, these guys, the pre-meeting, uh, and um, how uh, what happened to um, to Jacob when he wrestled with the uh, angel. And we're going to see from this vantage point what they say, because it is some different information I've never uh, read about anywhere, any any anywhere, basically. And I just thought it would be fun to bring it to you guys so that you can uh, take a look at it, um, mold it over in your mind, as they say. And so what we're going to do is take a break, and then we're going to come back and look at um, Jacob and Esau. We're going to take a look at the um, as he prepares to meet him. We're going to read from, from Legend of the Jews. And then we're going to uh, read about what happened when he wrestled the angels. And then we're going to finish off with the meeting between Esau and Jacob uh, as per the vantage point from the uh, Legend of the Jews. So we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Mr. Bible. As stated, we are going to start reading uh, from the vantage point of the legend of the Jews so that we can get a picture, a more robust picture, as their particular point of view and uh, see how it uh, reads and what happened there. So it is uh, Jacob um, and Esau prepares to meet. The message of Laban awakened Esau old hatred towards Jacob and with increased fury. And he assembled his household of men with them and 303 inhabitants of Seir. He went forth to do battle with Jacob and kill him. He divided his warriors in seven cohorts, giving to his son Elphaz his own division of 60 and putting the other six division, the sixth division on the as many of, of the Horites. While Esau was listening onward to meet Jacob, the messenger with Laban had sent to Esau came to Rebekah and told her that Esau and his 400 men were about to make war upon Jacob for the purpose of slaying him and taking possession of all that he had. Anxious, at least Esau should execute his plan. While yet Jacob was on the journey, she hastily dispatched 72 of the retainers of Isaac's household to give him help. Jacob, tarrying on the bank of the brook of Jabbok, rejoiced at the sight of these men, and he agreed. He, he greeted them with a word, This is God's helping host. Wherefore he called the place of this meeting Manaharmen host. After the warriors sent to Rebekah had satisfied his questions regarding the welfare of his parents, they delivered his mother's message unto him thus, I have heard, my son, that your brother Esau has gone forth against you on the road with men of the children of Seir, who writes, Therefore, my son, hearken to my uh, voice, and take counsel with thyself. Thou wilt do, and when he cometh to thee, supplicate him, and do not speak roughly to him, and give him a present from what you possess, and from what God has favored thee with. And when he asked thee, thee concerning thy affair, conceal nothing from him, perhaps he may turn his anger against thee, and thou wilt thereby save thy soul, thou and all belonging, for it is thy duty to honor him, since he is the elder brother. And we see that um, uh, Jacob actually follows his mother's advice, uh, because she had that much influence upon her son, and he did a, he did exactly just that. And we read that from the other um, the other books. We read it in the book of, of Yasher. It's also in the Bible. After the warriors sent by Rebekah, 
Um, and let me go back. And it says, And when Jacob heard the words of his mother, the messengers that had spoken to him, he lifted up his voice and wept bitterly and did as his mother commanded. He sent messengers to Esau, the place to placate him, and they said unto him, Say it, thy servant Jacob, my lord, think not that blessing which my father bestowed upon me, prophet. Twenty years I have served Laban, and he deceived me, and changed my heart ten times, as thou wilt well know. Yet did I labor solely in his house, and God saw my affliction, my labor, the work of my hand, and afterward he caused me to find grace and favor in the sight of Laban. And we've been talking about those um, power of grace, and I, I just want to tell you guys, you have to learn to implement it into your life. The Bible tells us how. In Hebrews chapter 4, it says, Come boldly before the throne of grace, whereby you may obtain mercy and find grace to help in your time of so. That's how you go and you get it. So it's freely. The Bible tells us also that God longs to be gracious to us as well in Isaiah. And I've read that to you guys previously. So we see that he found favor in the sight of Laban. And through God's great mercy and kindness, I acquired oxen and asses and cattle and men servant and maid servant. And now I am coming to my country and to my home, to my father and my mother who are in the land of Canaan. And I have sent to let my Lord know all this in order to find favor in the eyes of my Lord, so that he may not imagine that I have become a man of substance, or that blessing with which my father blessed me has benefited me. And so he's pointing back to the ben uh, the blessing, and he's saying, hey, uh, trying to tell his brother, um, it hasn't been working out so good for me. This is my story, I and he laid it out. And um, again, he's just pointing out to the blessing, trying to, I guess, deflect him from it, showing that, you know, stating that hey, it didn't, um, it wasn't all that it cracked up to be. Uh, so um, let's see what um, he says. Furthermore, the, uh, spake the messengers, why dost thou envy me in respect to the blessing wherewith my father blessed me? Is it, is it that the sun shineth in my land and not in yours, or doth the dew and the rain fall only upon my land and not upon you. If my father bless me with the dew of heaven, he bless you with the fatness of the earth. And if he spoke to me, uh, people will serve you. He has said unto me, By thy sword thou shalt live. How long then will thou continue to envy me? Come now, let us set up a covenant between us that we will share equally the vexation that may occur and we see he is again trying to placate his brother about the blessing and um you know how it uh, manifested in his life esau would not agree to his proposal his friends dissuaded him there therefrom saying accept not these conditions o god for god has said to abraham know of assuredly that your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve the people thereof and the aliens shall afflict them four hundred years therefore until jacob and his family go down to pay pay off his debt and we know that this actually happened and when moses was born to fulfill and uh, fulfill that particular prophecy and um bible always say in the fullness of time and so um where the exorcist takes place but these men knew about that promise that god had said to to um abraham about uh, being in egypt for that amount of time in bondage so uh, we see I love that people always talk about that because it tells us that they knew um, all this information and that they weren't um, ignorant to it, if you will. Jacob also sent word to Esau saying, Though I dwell with the heathen of the heathen Laban, have I not forgotten my God? But I will fulfill the 630 commandments of the Torah. If thy mind set upon peace, thou wilt find me ready. But if thou desire be war, thou wilt find me ready for war. I have with me men of valor and strength. They have the other word of God, and God fulfilled, fulfill it. I tarry with Laban until Joseph should be born, and as he is who is destined to subdue thee. And though my descendants be held in bondage in this world, yet they will come when they will rule over their rulers. And so these guys are just uh, talking about prophecy, and we saw this in the um, in the book, the following book coming up is the book of Exodus. I, in reply to all these gentle words, Esau spoke with arrogance. Surely I have 
heard, and truly it has been told upon me that Jacob has been to Laban, who brought him up in his house and gave him his daughters for wives, and he begot sons and daughters, and abundantly increased in wealth and riches in Laban's house, and with his help. When he saw that his wealth was abundant, and his riches were great, he fled with all the belonging to him from Laban's house, and he carried away Laban's daughter from their father as captives of the sword without telling him of it. And not only Laban had Jacob done thus, but also unto me has he done so. And he had twice supplant, supplanted me, and shall I be silent? Now I have this day come with my camp to meet him, and I will do unto him according to the desires of my heart. And so we are looking at um, these brothers from a different point of view. And um, I keep telling you guys, all of us have dysfunctional family, and we are watching this family uh, from different vantage points and studying how they have done uh, what they are doing to each other. You see this as these guys are uh, trying to get together to meet after many years apart. So we know that Laban had sent his servant, lied to him, and Laban's servant went to Rebekah, and Laban's servant went to um, Jacob. So everyone knows what's going on here. So let's continue to, to read. Then the message of dispatch by Jacob now returned to him, for the words of Esau unto him. They also told him his brother was advancing against him with an army consisting of 400 crowd, crown heads, each leading a host of 400 men. It is true thou art his brother, and thou treatest him as a brother. Should they said to Jacob that he is an Esau, thou must be made aware of his balance. Jacob bore in his mind the promise of God. And this is what I keep telling you guys. We are seeing it from this vantage point. Jacob bore in mind the promise of God. You and I have to do the very same thing, guys. We have to bear in mind the promises of God. It's in the Bible. Go find it bring it into your situation and release it remind him of it did you not say that's how my mother actually taught me how to pray my mom and my dad when she was here on this planet planet um she used to this little short woman uh can pray man and my father and um she would hold the bible and shake it for god and said you promised me you said in your word and man you would people come from all over to have her pray for them so uh, Jacob bore in his mind the promise of God that he would bring him back to his father's house in peace. Yet the report about his brother's purpose alarmed him greatly. A pious man may never depend upon promises of earthly goods. God does not God does not keep the promise if he is guilty of the smallest conceivable trespass. Jacob feared that he may might have forfeited happiness by reasons of sin committed by him. Moreover, he was anxious this Esau would be the one favored by God. In, in, inasmuch as he had these twenty years in fulfilling two divine commands that Jacob had to regard, Esau had been living in the Holy Land, up outside of it. The former had been in attendance upon his parents, and the latter dwelling at, at a distance um, uh, from them. And much of the feared defeated. Jacob also feared the reverse that he might be victorious over Esau or even slay his brother, which would be bad news as he slain by himself. And he was depressed by another apprehension that his father had died, for he reasoned that Esau would not take such warlike step against his own brother where his father was still alive. So we see a little more of what's happening within um, Jacob. And I could see him concerned about um, his father and what he stated that he didn't believe his brother would do this while his dad was alive because before we had read where um, Esau said he was waiting, on, he's going to wait until his father died. And then he's going to go and hunt him down. So let's uh, continue reading his wife. When his wife saw the anxiety possessed Jacob, they began to quarrel with him and reproach him for being taken away uh, from their father's house. They knew that such danger threatened from, from Esau. And Jacob determined to apply the three, three means that might save him from the fate impending. He would cry to God for help 
appease Esau's wrath with presents, hold himself in readiness for war if the worst came to worst. That's a good plan. So what we're going to do is take a break and come back and continue this from different vantage. Welcome back to Mystery Bible. We're going to continue looking. I'm going to briefly go through the stories so that you can, because there's still much in here that I want to touch base with you. We're going to touch base, um, I'm going to pick up where the angels of the Lord, remember in the past podcast, we talked about the three angels that God sent. And so the Lord sent three angels and they went before Esau and they appeared unto Esau and his people as hundreds of thousands of men riding upon horses. They are furnished with all sorts of weapon and divided into four columns. And one division went on and they found Esau coming with 400 men and the division ran towards them and terrified them. Esau fell off his horse, horse in alarm, and all his men separated from him in great fear, while approaching columns shouted after them, Truly we are the servants of Jacob, thy servant of God, and who come, who can stand against us? Esau said unto them, O oh, then, my lord, and brother Jacob is your lord, whom I have not seen in these twenty years, and now that I have this day come to see him, do you treat me in this manner? So he began to, um, uh, you know, say to them, hey, this is my brother. I'm going to see my brother. And it happened in four different that they, are, um, that they approach him. And so these men began to fell in, they began to become fearful as to um, all of these men coming, at, coming to them from Jacob. And it says, uh, we see that the men who were to bear the bearer of Jacob's present to Esau were charged with the following message. This is an offering of my Lord uh, Esau to his slave Jacob. But God took these words of Jacob in ill part, saying, Thou prof profanest what is holy when thou callest Esau Lord. Jacob excused himself. He was but flattering the wicked in order to escape death at his hand. So God corrected him. And uh, let's take a look. And Jacob wrestles with the angel. So this is the um, the chronicle of Jacob wrestling with the the servant of Jacob went uh, before him with the presence for Esau. And we talked about that. He's following his three uh, plan, his three approaches. Number one, he's going to pray. Number two, he's going to send his uh, brother presents. Number three, he's going to prepare for war. So let's see as Jacob wrestles with the angel. Uh, the servant of Jacob went before him with the present and Esau. And he followed him with wives and children. As he went about to pass over the ford of Dabrook, he observed a shepherd who likewise had sheep, camel. The stranger approached Jacob and proposed that they should ford the stream together and he helped each other um, move their cattle over. And Jacob assented on the condition that his possession should be put across first. In the twinkling of an eye, Jacob's sheep were transferred to the other side and of the stream and, and by the shepherd. And the flock of the shepherd were to be moved to ja by Jacob, but no matter how many took over the opposite bank, always they remained some of the other hither um, at, the, at the shore. There was no end to the cattle, though Jacob labored all the night through. At last, at last he lost his patience, and he fell upon the shepherd and caught him by the throat, crying out, O thou wizard, thou wizard, at night no enchantment succeeds. Angel thought very well, let, ne let him know once for all with he whom he, he is dealing with. And his finger he touched the earth, whence it fire burst forth. But Jacob said, What thou thinkest thou uh, to affri uh, affright me, who uh, am made holy of fire? The shepherd is no less a patronage to the archangel Michael. In his combat with Jacob, he was assisted by the whole host of angels under his command. He was on the point of inflicting a dangerous wrong upon Jacob when God appeared, and all the angels, even Michael himself, fell, fell their strength, oozed away, seeing that could not prevail against Jacob. The archangel touched his hollow of his eyes and injured him. And God rebuked him, saying, As thou act as in seemly, when thou causest a blemish in my uh, Jacob. Michael said in astonishment, Why is it I who am thy priest? But God said, Thou art in heaven, and he is my priest on earth. Thereupon Michael summoned the archangel Raphael, saying, 
comrade, I pray thee, help me out of my distress, for thou art charged with the healing of all disease, and Raphael for Jacob, of the injury Michael had inflicted upon him. The Lord continued to reproach Michael, saying, Why didst thou do harm unto my firstborn son? And the archangel answered, I did it to glorify thee. And then God appointed Michael as the guardian of angels over Jacob and his seed unto the end of all generation with these words thou art a fire and so is jacob a fire thou art the head of the angels and he is the head of the nation thou art supreme over all the angels and he is supreme over all the people therefore he who is supreme over all the angels shall be appointed unto him who is supreme over all the people that he may entreat mercy for him from the supreme over all then michael said unto jacob how is it possible that thou couldst prevail against the most distinguished of the angels are afraid of esau and they broke michael said to jacob let me go for the day break it but jacob held him back saying art thou a thief or a gambler with dice that thou fearest the daylight at that moment um appeared many different hosts of angels and they called unto michael ascend o michael time of song has come and if thou art not in heaven to lead the choir no one will sing and michael entreated jacob with supplication to let him go for he feared the angel of arbath would consume him with fire if he were not there to start the song of praise at the proper time jacob said i will not let thee go except thou bless me before michael um made reply who is greater servant or the son i am the servant and thou art the son why then carest thou my blessing jacob urged as an argument angel that visited abraham did not leave uh, without blessing him from and um but michael said i there were sent god for that very purpose and i was not but jacob insisted upon his demand and michael pleaded with him saying the angels that betray a heavenly secret were banished from the for one hundred and eight years dost thou desire that i should acquaint thee with what would cause banishment likewise in the end the angel nevertheless had to yield jacob did not move and michael took counsel with himself thus i will reveal a secret to him and if god demands to know why i reveal it i will make answer thy children stand upon their wishes with thee and thus did yield to them how then could i have left jacob unfulfilled and so we see that this basically goes in and um the the legend of the jews goes and tells us a little more to uh the angels and so forth and we know that he had an encounter with the angels because the bible also talks about that this just goes into a little more the meeting between esau and jacob at the break of the day the angels left off from wrestling with jacob dawn on the day was particularly short duration the sun rose two hours before his time by way of compensation for having set early the day on which jacob passed mount moriah on his journey to haran induce him to turn aside and lodge for a night on the future temple place indeed the power of the sun on his same day was altogether remarkable he shone with the brilliance and ardor with which he vested during the six days of the creation and he and as he shined at the end of the day to make whole the halt and the blind amongst the jews and to consume the heathen this seemed healing and devastating poverty he had on that day too for jacob was cured esau and his princes were all but burnt up by his terrible and um the book of enoch speaks to the sun and the stars and the moon as entities as luminate and um in the book of enoch also talks about all these different uh rebellious stars that are put aside because of their rebellion against god even the stars so um there's a lot of things that you and i don't know about and um but we know that uh these these guys met and i wanted to give you that information because it's really an interesting stuff uh from a different point of view i wanted to go into some of the stuff about the angels and um how they were um how god came spoke to them and deal with them so these two brothers as we we're meeting we see that um uh, uh the sun is shining came out a couple of hours early and it's the heat is really 
draining the strength out of Esau and his people, and in the same way that um, uh, uh, Jacob and his people are being refreshed as a result of this. So you see that um, uh, there's a scripture that talks about uh, Jacob I loved and Esau I hated. And we know that uh, Jesus, he's, he saw his behavior. He was a proud person, and um, he uh, never took things that were serious, birthright and and the blessing and all these type of things. We know he wanted the blessing because of uh, the wealth that it would bring, and we know that he possessed the um, the garment that uh, he took from um, from Nimrod after had killed him. So as these brothers met, and we talked about. Um, these gifts coming and they kept coming, they kept coming to him. And when um, the book of Yasher tells us that because of God's grace or that divine favor, um, God caused um, Esau's heart and his and his men's heart to change to kindness. It tells us, and because of the grace of God. But um, I just wanted to tell you guys from that vantage point, so you can see. Um, that God's grace, man, as well as all of these different stories that uh, people talk about, the core of the story is still the same. The um, you know God coming had the fight with the um, with the angels. God, um, you know, the angel touches hip, um, his hip socket out, and how these brothers reunited. They ran to each other, hugged each other, kissed and cried, and all of that stuff. And um, I just want to thank you guys. Uh, I'm going to call it, uh, um, just end it here. And then next podcast, uh, as I said, I want to break it down so that you and I can see. Because the Bible tells us that those that are born again, when we become born again and we are translated from one kingdom into the other, we have to behave different now. We have to act differently and one of the things that we are called to do is to forgive our brothers. And God tells us in the scripture, uh, Jesus mentioned it many times. He says that, um, especially Mark 11, when he talked about uh, the faith to move mountains. He also said that if we have any sin or if we have any ought against our brother, we need to go take care of that first before we can even come to God. And so we want to walk through some of those people so that you and I will not be caught in this trap going before God and having our hearts in that right because the Bible tells us he won't hear our prayer. He's not going to his kids, man. So I want to bring to you guys that principle so that we can learn and become effective and change this world. And thank you for all those who support me financially. I really, truly thank you guys. As I mentioned before, um, I had, um, I felt led to leave my job and to focus on this, really get a chance to study so that I can bring Bible in a different format so that um, we can at least get you guys um, excited about the Bible again. You can go read it for yourself and learn and um, expand your your mind as to uh, who God is, who Jesus is, and not be put in the box that they put him in on Sunday and, and Wednesday night and Sunday school and so forth. He's bigger than that. He is um, love with you and I. Jesus is in love with us. He's done much for us and we need to know what they are so that we can really become effective, become truly the sons of God and walk in our strength and our I want to thank all my brothers and sisters and those that are listening at this podcast that are not saved and I invite you guys to get to know Jesus Christ. He is a lot of fun. Father is a lot of fun. There's is he's not interested in you can't do this, you can't do that. He wants to get you to become free. The Bible says Christianity, true Christianity, is about freedom. And it is not about can't do this or, or whatever. It's because you love him and he's going to teach you how to love you. And you will in turn love others and learn about who you are in Christ Jesus. And it is a lot of God bless you and your family. Come to pray for you.